Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about the floor press, which is one of my favorite assistance movements for the bench press. I've used it off and on many times over the years. I've been a big fan of it, promoted it many times in the past. Um, something I currently have in my training again, once a week at least. I don't necessarily do it on both my bench press days, but I do it once a week, and it's something I feel like we need to talk about, we need to know about. And I think particularly for people with a history of shoulder issues, it's a great alternative to the bench press in their case uh, if they don't have access to a football bar. Perfect example, uh, I have a client right now who has had a shoulder impingement issue in the past and currently I have him floor pressing. Right? I have him doing a lot of floor pressing. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that it does limit to some extent the range of motion. It puts you in a position that's very safe on your shoulder joint, very safe on the shoulder joint, particularly when you have a nice tuck at the bottom, because it's also quite easy to, to get a, a tuck on it. And again, it's a very, very good exercise for people who have a history of shoulder injuries. Now, if someone can't do anything else and they have access to say a football bar, I mean, if you have a, a problem with shoulder injuries and you have access to say a football bar or a Swiss bar, and you do floor presses with that, I think that's also one of your ultimate solutions. Right, for people who can't do any sort of barbell benching. Again, due to a history of shoulder issues. So right up front, it's very protective uh, of those areas. Very protective of those areas. And that alone gives it a lot of value, uh, both in terms of being a supplemental lift, as well as for some people, a primary lift. Now, the downside, if you're trying to have to use it as a primary lift, not everyone is built like I am. I have a big rib cage. Notice I touched my chest. I have a big rib cage. I also have a, a lot of back development. That helps as well. A lot of guys don't have enough meat on their back, on their lats, to really make this the sort of range of motion that might be ideal. And for some of those guys, I might recommend stacking rubber mats under their back that are narrow enough for their arms to clear it. So that when they come down, it increases the range of motion at the bottom in that way. Which means they might have a range of motion that's very similar to mine. Now, the only reason I can touch my chest is because of my rib cage, but that extra few inches of back I have back there does help as well. So for a lot of guys putting an inch or two of nice rubber matting or foam matting or something like that under there uh, would, be, would be useful for that. I wouldn't do anything too hard though because you want to be on rubber, so I wouldn't necessarily use something like a 25 pound plate. Uh, but it's just options you have so that you could increase the range of motion. And, you know, that's the other thing. You could use that to adjust the range of motion if you needed to on it, right? So like with anything else, the, the range of motion is still adjustable based upon things you lay under you. So that you can make it further. Because a lot of people are worried that it might be a partial. And it, it is a partial for some people. It's a partial for most people. But it's not an extreme partial, even in most cases. And that's the point we make. We're not saying when we talk about partial lifts that you have some exercise which, you know, the bar still moves 18 inches. But it just it takes 2 inches off or 3 inches off from the normal classical lift. That's not what we mean by a partial. A partial is something where you're doing a half range of motion. Or less. Extreme partials are, again, just a few inches. So that's not what we're talking about with partials, but it does remove that, and in some cases that might lose some of the potential training effect. But that can be offset with a little bit of uh, stuff put under your back. So when we come to training modalities, people say, so, so why the floor press outside of that? Well, what is it that we're trying to do with supplemental lifts usually when we separate from classic lifts? We're trying to get lifts that elicit the most training response with the least training fatigue. Or we avoid overuse injuries. All right, if you do large volumes of flat benching every single week as a primary chest exercise, and you can, you may reach a threshold to where we talk about the, the shoulder inflammation, right? You can only handle so much volume of it. Maybe your shoulders can only handle so much volume of it. But you have the ability to handle more training volume at the muscular level. Maybe your chest and your triceps can handle more training volume. But maybe just your shoulders can't. Or if you did too much, maybe they could, but they'll start getting some inflammation. This gives us an alternative that works those areas differently that puts a little less stress on them. Which means we might be able to sub out three sets of that bench press every week and replace it with five or six sets of the floor press without having that issue. Okay. 
and we'll come over to that in a second. So if you can do that, and you can recover from it better because what's the other deal with it? Your five are at max. Let's say you're working with fives, right? I'm just giving you a rep range. It doesn't matter. I don't care if it's single, threes, fives, tens, twenties, 37 rep sets, whatever. I'm picking five. It's a good number. You're doing a five rep max on a bench. Your five rep max on a floor press is going to be less than your bench press. I'm not talking about when you bounce the bar off the floor. I'm talking about actually pausing it you will not be able to do quite as much weight. It might only be five pounds different. It might be 10 pounds different. It might be 20 pounds different. But it is going to be less. However, it elicits just as strong of a training response because it uses the same primary movers. It uses the chest, the front delts, triceps. Now, a lot of EMG data would suggest that it hits the chest even harder than a flat bench. And the flat bench does hit your chest pretty hard. Don't let anyone tell you that it doesn't. That's nonsense. Now, EMG studies are not the be-all, end-all. I will throw in the N equals 1 anecdote that I feel my chest a lot more after a heavy set. I mean, I feel my chest on a bench press. I do notice a distinctly different feeling in my chest on the floor press than I do on a similar limit set of bench press. So I have that to go with that little bit of EMG data that was suggested. And I would argue and say, well, we know it's not less stimulation. And there's a small amount of evidence that it's superior stimulation. I wouldn't take that to the bank, but it's something. But it's slightly easier to recover from. All right. So if we have an exercise like this that is giving, hopefully, equal or better stimulation that is slightly easier to recover from, can we train it more often? Can we do more training volume? Yes. Particularly even as a supplemental lift. Let's think about that from the perspective of a supplemental lift. I can do more volume with it as a supplemental lift without the extra overuse injuries, potentially and it gives me an alternative, I can train more. I can do more total work sets without beating my body up. If you can do more work sets that give you a good training stimulus, and I'm talking real sets, sets that are challenging, that have reps very close to failure, or very close to a max, well, that's more training response. What is it that we're always looking at balancing? We're looking at balancing training stimulus versus recovery. This exercise is really, really good on the training stimulus versus recovery. So if we're, if we're chasing hypertrophy, it's a real good exercise and it uses a lot of big muscles. It's a lot of big muscles. And you have that certain amount of just that hold at the bottom. You have to move that weight from a dead stop. Now you don't get a stretch reflex on it, but you sure get some dead stop training in well, that's useful. Then let's come over to, let's talk about technique and strength. Floor press is essentially a bench press that forces you to get really tight at the bottom, but you lose the leg drive. You can't use the leg drive. The movement pattern is very, very similar to your competition bench press. So what does that mean? That means it trains the bench press. In other words, we know that if you take somebody off the flat bench and you have them do nothing but floor press for months and months and months on end and they come back to a bench press, they can usually still bench press pretty good, can't they? Yeah, it has carryover. Right? It has carryover. Well, that means that even for someone who wants to get a better bench who needs to take a phase off from benching, it's a valid replacement. So not only is it an extremely good hypertrophy exercise, it has technique carry over to a classic lift. That's an extremely valuable exercise to have in your repertoire. You learn how to perform it correctly. Now, is it risky? Yes, it's risky because if you bang your elbows off the floor because you ego lift with it, it will hurt you. It, that will hurt you. Hitting your elbows on the floor on this lift can lead to an injury and not just elbow injuries. It can cause wrist injuries from the bounce and everything. But if you can eliminate that, it's actually a very, very safe exercise. It's 
pretty much impossible to hit your neck. You don't even need safeties. You don't need safeties. You don't need a spotter. Right? You just crawl out from under it. As the bar comes down, you just drop it over above your face, which is scary. And you just slide out from under it. Because even if it hits your chest, you can just let it roll back. And then it rolls, and instead of hitting your neck, the plates roll across the floor. Those plates will clear your, your, your neck and your face completely with a pair of 45s on there. Very safe exercise. All right, this is an exercise that's smart. It's basic, it's simple, and it brings a lot to the table. I'm a big fan of it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.